Jack here and welcome back to part two of the determination and work rate experiment here on Football Manager 2013. So yeah, if you missed the previous video, highly recommend you go and watch it. In this series, we're basically going to be looking into different elements of FM and looking at how different values and different numbers impact elements of gameplay. So for episode one, we're looking at how determination and work rate implements and affects um, how players develop as younger options. So last episode we went up to the players 21st birthdays. From now onwards it's just going to be a year by year update. So here we are. All the players are 22 as you can see. Uh, last uh, time we had the update of course. Uh, one of the guys had left and gone to Villa. Since then determination has, always mo has also moved on from Southampton. So let's get straight in and have a look at what's going on here. We've starting off with the chosen one. So uh, it's interesting to see he is still playing regular uh, first team football uh, at Villa it would seem he's one of their top earners £12 million they paid for him and he's currently on £89,000 a week, uh, just a quick reminder all these players have 200 potential ability and 100 uh, current ability when they all started so every one of these players was exactly the same, uh, so he's at Villa, uh, he's really turned into the all round kind of player I expected him to become uh, as you can see, determination and work rate still both. Uh, determination and work rate still both uh, twenty. His value seventeen. That's ridiculous. Um, he's an England international as well with twenty uh, caps. He's not on their top players list just yet. But where where is he slotting into their system? He is. Um, he's kind of one of their outside players, it would seem. Although that said, he is injured. But twenty caps for England at twenty two is pretty insane. Um, his technical stats are insane. Now, he's just become the complete package. Obviously, with him having the 200 uh, potential ability, he could become world-class. And it's interesting to see that he is already becoming that. Looking at where he's playing, he's been playing left mid a little bit, as well as uh, up front for England. Um, so that's pretty interesting. Um how many goals has he scored this year? He scored six goals this year. Average rating of 6.95, although it's not that great, he's still continuing to improve. Uh, looking at his personal information, uh, we can see here his per uh, personality is uh, driven, which is a very good personality to have. Yeah, Looking forward to recovering from his injury. Uh, can we get his preferred moves up? I can't remember where they're shown. I don't know if I can get them up. Um, here. But looking at these stats, they're absolutely insane. Um, yeah, there's not, not a lot more that can be said about him, really. I was expecting him to be the one who obviously did the best, having the best determination and best work rate, but he's turned into a bit of a monster. Uh, but Pierre Determination here has moved to Stoke for £9 million. Um, it would appear that happened this transfer window at the start of this season so uh, it's important to note that it's the 30th of June so he's just come to Southampton who got promoted wow okay so Southampton got promoted this year as well so all the players still at Southampton will be playing in the Premier League as well but determination he's hopped on board to Stoke um, interesting to see that looking at his stats his strengths through the roof his work rate's gone up as well, which is interesting to see. Obviously, his determination has obviously helped the development of his work rate, which will help him develop. Still not breaking into the England first team just yet. As you can see, he's on half the wages and he's half the value of kind of um, the chosen one. But it's interesting to see those two players both making it, I guess, uh, away from Southampton and to stronger Premier League teams. Um, Pierre Balance is doing okay, it would seem. On £32,000 a week. Value of £4.5 million, which isn't too shabby. Uh, looking at the form. Played 34 games this year. Not the best stats in the world. But getting regular first team football now. And obviously Southampton, as I've said, going up. Um, kind of interesting to see that the players with more work rate way more. Now, I don't know if that's just coincidence. But it might just mean they work in the gym more. I literally have no idea. But that's a really odd kind of coloration to have. Bear in mind, all these players with the same height and the same weight and all that stuff when they first started so now weighing like 30 kilograms more that's quite a, a quite a big difference if you ask me so maybe that has something to do with work rate I don't even know does anyone know work rate and weight in FM have a coloration seems to seems to be the case but anyway Pierre Balance um, 
Only one year left on his deal, so it might be interesting to see if he moves on. Although he has got a broken leg. That's in, that's a pretty big bummer. What kind of injuries has he had? Um, so he's had a few, ha well, a repeated hamstring injury, which has probably kind of affected his growth. But he still played okay when he has played. Let's just check the other players who I've already reviewed for their injuries. Uh, Pierre Determination, not having many injuries, that's certainly going to have aided his development, although he's had a torn hamstring too. Maybe these guys, all these clones have the same uh, Achilles heel with torn hamstrings. Um, wow, it is pretty odd that they all have torn hamstrings so far, but you can see the chosen one here as well. He's had pretty good luck when it's come to injuries um, Maybe that's affected Balance's growth. It's one of these things where uh, it's important to remember that although this is kind of a little experiment, there are f f kind of factors outside the determination of work rate that are going to affect players' growths. Looking at him, he's made 30 appearances for England's under-21s now. His stats haven't really improved massively. There is some difference, but he's very much the player that he already was. So not too much growth to tell you about there. And we go on to pure work rate to... He doesn't seem to really be doing anything. That said, his determination has gone up to 13, so that's probably um, kind of thanks to some tutoring at some point in the last year. Um, only made 14 first-team appearances, which is going to be affecting how well he gr kind of grows and develops as a player. Only valued at a million pounds as well, so again, you can really see kind of how he's struggling to play first-team football and it's affecting his growth. Uh, two torn hamstrings for him and a broken foot. So those injuries have, gonna, have, have kind of impacted his development a lot. One of the torn hamstrings was uh, earlier on this season as well. So that will have certainly also affected him. Uh, and then last but not least, we have no brain here. This guy, <laughs> he's just nothing like. I mean, if I do a comparison between this guy and the chosen one, um, I know you can't see the graph very well, so let me just bring up the... Um, attributes area I mean look at the difference now that you can see between these two players they were exactly identical at the start of this save obviously the only differences were the determination and work rate uh, for which um, no brain had two determination and one work rate you can see his work rate and determination have both improved but looking at all the other stats, you can just see how the sheer amount of training and the I guess the rate at which the chosen ones developed is just so much greater than No Brain. And No Brain is still in the Southampton Reserves here. He's not made many appearances at all. I'll be amazed if he's still at the club in a few years. But that's pretty interesting to see. Um, so at the moment you can really already see the pattern emerging that the determined players are moving on. I'm somewhat surprised to see pure work rate below pure balance in terms of their progress but again both players have suffered a lot of injuries and uh, lack of first team football through those injuries will have it kind of impacted their development as footballers. Uh, but anyway guys I'm now going to move forward again and we'll, we'll see how the guys are getting on uh, aged 23. Okay guys, so we're back again and the players are now 23. Let, let's see what they're doing here. Wow, okay, so there's been some changes. Damn, a lot of changes actually now I look at it. Jeez, okay. Bear, bear in mind I am literally going off the fly with this. The chosen one at Man U, that's going to be an interesting one. A no brain is a free agent. Okay, let, let's start from the bottom up this time. Let's mix things up. Uh, so no brain here. Obviously the player with no brain. Free agent, he's been released by Southampton. Only made eight first team appearances for them. Wow. Um, well, that, that wasn't quite... I wasn't expecting the kind of impact of no determination and no work rate to be that dramatic. But you can see he's, he's not improved as a player at all. Uh, whether that's just through lack of first team football, of course, there are going to be factors outside of... Um, the determination work and work rate which affects his growth but he's not had as many injuries as some of the other players and he's certainly struggled uh, there's not much I can really tell you about him because he's just not done anything um, pure work rate here looking at his stats he's, he's not developed again very well but let's see if he's made he's made a few a handful of kind of first team appearances for Southampton in this year in the Premier League have they stayed in the Prem no they haven't they've gone straight back down and they've got another new manager in Paul Lintz they've, they've certainly swapped managers a lot Southampton during this kind of last few years um, interesting to see he's only made 64 appearances work rate has he had any injuries uh, he's out again for another two months of a hip injury damn that's pretty pretty unlucky. Also, he's torn his hamstring this year as well. And he had a thigh strain. So, a few injuries to tell you about there that certainly will have affected his growth and probably his chances in the first team. But, um... That's a, that's a, I was kind of expecting maybe to pick it up, but clearly those injuries are having an impact. Uh, we go on to balance here. 
who's made 15 appearances and you can see the difference he's made 120 more appearances than Pierre Workrate has at Southampton in the same amount of years so you can see, kind of see the difference between the two players I know someone's going to be saying they both play the same positions I should point out that they can play naturally in any of these attacking positions so they could play left attacking mid at the same rate they could play right attacking mid like it really doesn't make a difference they have 20 in all those positions um that's pretty pretty crazy to see um I'm pretty amazed by that, actually. Balance here. Uh, he's not made any more under 21 appearances because he's not 21 anymore. Um, his contract, he's got, he's got a little bit left on his contract now, so clearly he's been offered a new deal. Uh, Stats-wise, not improved massively, but you know, still a feature of the first team, which is interesting to see. I'm kind of curious to see what these two guys are doing now, especially the chosen one, but first we'll cover pure determination. Looking at determination, breaking into the England first team, which is cool to see. Eight appearances, now five goals. So obviously, this is two years after the chosen one broke into the first team. So it gives you an idea of kind of the difference between the two players. Interesting also to see him getting trained at right mid. So maybe that's the kind of system that Stoke are playing and that he's going to fit into there. 16 creativity is pretty impressive. You can see now he really has become a solid player all round. Uh, he's on 46 grand a week and worth 13 million. Uh, this year he made 28 appearances at Stoke. Obviously, this is his first season. Seven goals and five assists is pretty impressive to see, and he's looking like a very good player for them. Um, yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of surprised by that. So I can check his squad. Oh, I know how I can check check his squad status. If I go to the contract tab, we can see. He's a key player for them, so he is one of Stoke's kind of main men. So that's pretty interesting to see. Stoke this year finished a mid, a solid mid table of ninth. So um, he's holding the fort for them pretty well, which is kind of impressive to see, I suppose. Uh, so last but not least, let's check the chosen one, who's at now at Manchester United. Wow. That's kind of... I thought he might go to a big club, but this is impressive. £19 million he went for in January from Villa. So... Um, since then, he's made 12 appearances in that second half of the season, which is impressive. 7.12 average rating, which is better than he's had in any previous spell. So clearly, he's making that step up to Manchester United. 32 caps now for England, so that's 12 caps in a year, which isn't too shabby at all. Uh, nine goals in that time as well, and a value of £21 million with a £82,000 a week wage. That's pretty crazy, if you ask me. Um... He's got really good stats as well, which is impressive. Um, he's a rotation option for them. Kind of amazed at how much he's developed. Um, driven personality still, as you'd expect. He's been playing a variety of positions at international level. You can see here he's played left mid a few times, attacking centre mid, and he's also played up top a number of times, which probably explains his goals at that level. Um... For some reason, I can't get his club stats. I don't know if that's because we're beyond the end of the season. That would be my guess. Um, but no, that's pretty impressive stuff by him. Um, I'm kind of amazed at how much he's kind of stepped up, actually. Obviously, all these players do have infinite potential, as I'll, as I'll say and I'll say again. But I really wasn't expecting someone to make it to Man U kind of this early on. Maybe in the later career, but to prove yourself and be attracted to a club like Man U at 23... Although this is nine years into his kind of career, um, you've got to remember like he started at 14, he's still only 23, so that's crazy stuff there. And already at the age of 23, his total transfer value is £31 million. Pounds. Wow. Oh, God, I didn't mean to hit that. Excuse me there. Right, guys, so what I think I'm going to do now is I'm going to skip forward, of course, another year, and we'll see how these guys are getting on. Uh, this is getting pretty interesting now. Okay, guys, so we're back, and it's uh, 2022 now. All the players are 24. Let's see how they're getting on. So, um, looking at the side, some interesting stuff happening here, actually, immediately I can see, and that is the fact that every player is a first-team player or key player at their respective clubs. So, um, let's see where people are going. Um... We'll start from the bottom up again. So no brain is at Dundee now. So um, interesting move there, going to Scotland. Uh, he made 14 appearances this year for them in the entire season, only averaging a 6.5 rating. That is not very good at all. Um, that, no, that's that's interesting actually. He is not made any under 21 appearances or any international kind of appearances as you'd expect. 
Uh, has he had any injuries in this time? Um, no, not really. He's just it's not he's not developed. He's had knee ligament problems actually, as I look at it. But he's had a few injuries here and there actually that may have had played it against him and made him miss football. But still not very impressive. And I mean, look at his value now. Obviously, going down to the Scottish Premier League, lower reputation league. But even so, that value was absolutely abysmal. Uh, pure work rate here. Let's see how he's getting on. He's now a first team player for Southampton, who finished. They finished third in the pre in the championship last year, but they didn't get promoted. And now Mark Hughes is their manager. So another change. That's like their fourth manager in four years. Actually, let's check that. Um, damn. Yeah, they they've certainly got through a number of managers in this time. Um, you can see they've been sacked a lot of them. And Derek McInnes left his role. So that's probably going to be hindering players' developments. Obviously, different managers coming in. But it's interesting to see that um, two of the five players are still at Southampton despite all these changes. Work rate here is on £25,000 a week. He made 18 appearances last year for them. Um, I don't know what to make of that. Has he had any injuries which have impacted that? Um... If I go on date a year, that will probably help more. Um, no, he's not had an injury since May last year. So he had a full season of fitness, but he's just not done anything with it. Um, that's, an, that's an odd one, actually. Um, he's still looking okay for them. He's been trained in right mid as well. So clearly, Mark Hughes trying to fit him into the system. Looking at Pierre Ballant here. Uh, key player now for Southampton, I think it said. Did it say key? Is he a key? Uh, if I just go to contract, yeah, he's a key first team player for them. So that's interesting to see. Um, 37 appearances last season as well. 10 goals and 7 assists. That's pretty impressive stuff by him. Um, obviously, he's made now 223 appearances for Southampton. You can see his stats here. Not the greatest average ratings, really. That's one thing that I'm noticing about all these players. They don't seem to have the best average ratings ever but nevertheless you know he is a key player for them he's not made any appearances for the England first team squad but um, he, he's not looking too shabby okay so two more players and whoa okay I didn't even notice that determination and moved to what okay I need to see this he's, he's at Tottenham but he's worth 22 million and he's on a hundred and five thousand pound a week okay that's that's pretty ridiculous. Um, that's a big contrast. Um, looking at his stats, very solid all-round player as you'd expect. How much did they buy him for? Thirty-eight million. Damn. I wish I had that money to throw at a player like this. He made twenty-eight appearances, only averaged a six point seven nine, which isn't actually that great. I'm kind of confused as to why Spurs have play paid so much for him. Admittedly, he is a very good player, but. I wouldn't have paid as much as that for him. Interesting stuff, that. Looking at it as well, 14 appearances now for England with seven goals. Those appearances for England have come up top mostly, which is pretty interesting to see. Um, you can see here, his personality is driven still. That's pretty That's pretty interesting. I'm going to look forward to comparing him with the chosen one, who is now a first-team player at Manchester United. So as you can see, he's 24 creativity is up to 16 that's pretty impressive I think that was actually where it was before now I think about it but looking at his stats 32 appearances for Man U this year averaging a 6.98 rating um, really impressive stats there as you can see across the board um, wow uh, I can't quite believe how much these players have developed um, obviously making big moves up the league to two of the guys at least it seems like determination plays a huge role in players developments 44 caps for England with 16 goals. Let's compare you with determination. And we'll do it uh, tributely. Um, they're pretty similar players, if I'm honest. Like, obviously, as much as work rate and determination have an impact on a player's stats, it also comes down to coaching and, you know, stuff like that. There are other, I guess, values that I have to keep taking on board. But these players have come out very much even Stevens. Um... Maybe the chosen one just edges it, but even then, they're very similar players. Um, whoa, it, they're very similar players. Um, obviously, the chosen ones had a lot more 
kind of international experience. But looking at the two guys, they're very they're, they're, well. They're similar players to say the least. Um, it'll be interesting to see how these get on. They've kind of become little rivals for each other. Um, I'm I'm really curious to see how they develop. But um, interesting stuff. They're obviously no brain at Dundee. Um, I'm going to go forward one more year here and we'll see what's what and then I'm probably going to cut it off for this episode so I'll talk to you guys in just a, a second or two. Okay guys, so we're back for the last time this episode. Let's see what's going on here. Um, okay, so all the players still at their squads. I kind of expected that. doesn't look like we've had any squad status changes either other than uh, No Brain becoming a rotation option here. Uh, let's, have, let's have a look at No Brain first. So, played for Dundee again this year. 22 appearances this season. Looks like he's had a better kind of year at the club. Um, what's his stats looking like? Okay, they're looking absolutely terrible. But, interesting to see that. Um, he, he is playing okay. Uh, he's just signed a new contract as well, so that's interesting. Uh, literally on pennies. And the contrast, contrast between all these players is pretty immense. Um, work rate still at uh, Southampton. Has he made any first team appearances? He has. He's made 32 this year and they've got promoted. So that's good to see. Uh, I mean, he'll be playing at a higher level. Uh, now Steve McLaren's the manager. Damn, they really are getting through managers, Southampton, on this save. Um, but interesting to see the fact that, you know, he is playing a lot more first team football. Uh, let's see how balance is getting on as well at Southampton quickly. So. 6.25 million value only made 29 appearances this year for Southampton let's see did he have any injuries to contend with um, looks like he had a pretty injury prone kind of year 2000 kind of the last year and a half has kind of impacted him certainly tore his hamstring again I'm surprised at the amount of injuries some of these guys have had um, but no, another injury there for those two guys. Let's compare work rate and balance actually quickly um, to see kind of the difference. So um, if I now go to attributes, uh, the difference is pretty broad actually. Balance is certainly the better player it would seem. Um, despite the work rate being superior, um, obviously other factors coming into play. I'm kind of surprised by this result. Kind of all the other results I've had in this experiment and this research are kind of what I was expecting, but this has been one which has certainly thrown me off. Um, obviously, both players are very similar, but the contrast between them is pretty kind of obvious on the face of things. You can certainly see, particularly in the uh, technical area and the uh, mental area, uh, a definite kind of advantage to uh, balance over work rate. So that's pretty interesting to see. Uh, looking at our final two chums, we have Determination and the Chosen One. So Determination, obviously, he's still at Spurs. Last season, he made 31 appearances for them in the league, which is all but seven games, which is pretty impressive stuff. Uh, average rating of 6.84. Only scored eight goals and four assists. My guess would be that he was playing right attack in mid rather than attacker for them, simply because... Those that, that amount of goals up top would not make sense at all. And looking at his stats, he is very much a, a winger, if anything. Um, but a very, a very good player for them, it would seem. Um, 19 appearances now for England with 8 caps as well, which is pretty impressive. Uh, and let's look at the chosen one, who's had a big wage hike this year of £40,000. So clearly Man U wanting to keep hold of him. Um, worth £22 million. Looking at his stats... 35 league appearances for Manchester United with 11 goals and 8 assists. And he certainly upped his game in the last two and a half years at Manchester United. Their facilities will be helping him develop. Uh, 54 caps for England as well. That's insane. Let's have a quick look at the players' achievements. I'm not going to look at all the players, but I will look at the chosen one and pure determination. So um, any real impressive ones to tell us about? Uh, induced into the England seasonal eleven. That's pretty impressive. So he made England's team of the season. Uh, if I go on best 11, we can see here this is England's best 11. Is he on the bench? He is on the bench. So it's pure determination. So that's pretty interesting to see them both there um, in 2023. Did any of them make it last year, the year before? Oh, they both made it in that year as well. So that was um, determination when he was at it at Stoke that he got that placement there. So both players have certainly performed very highly up 
Um, and actually, they both made it the year before that as well into the England English players starting eleven. Uh, well, uh, kind of squad with the chosen one getting in the starting eleven. I'll just check 2019, and you can see here the chosen one actually made it there as well, and that was when he was at Villa. So pretty impressive stuff there. Um, it has to be said. Really interesting to see these players developing. Um, Again, you know, this, this video is more just to kind of examine and look at this stuff because it is pretty interesting seeing how different attributes um, kind of affect a player long term and kind of examining just a few players' long term careers. Um, so, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. The last episode was super well received in this series um, when we looked at these players in terms of people really kind of responding well to the videos. I think we set like a record number of likes for a video that I've ever got in kind of 24 hours, which was amazing to see. Uh, maybe, maybe we could try and beat it again. As always, um, if you've got anything else that you want me to show about these players that I might not have shown, be sure to leave it um, down in the comments, and I will certainly try and show it for you guys. I'm probably going to make this save available for download as well, uh, come the end of it all, uh, maybe with like multiple kind of save points throughout these players' careers so that you guys can take a look at them in a bit more detail if you want to really look at the nitty gritty stuff. Uh, but as I've said, you know, leave a comment if you've got any suggestions, uh, be that to improve the, this kind of existing research or if you've got an idea for a future research plan you'd like to see. If you see any down in the comments that you like the idea of, give them a thumbs up so I know which ones people want to see. Uh, as I've said, give the video a like if you enjoyed. And other than that, guys, thank you for watching as always. It's me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.